some hormones can cause cancer, and we know that we've seen it in history very, very directly, cause and effect situations that were unfortunate, but they're good lessons to learn from. Um, not all hormones can cause cancer, and some can prevent cancer. Um, some can cause it too. And so it's good to understand why they can cause it and how they can cause it. Um, and when you talk about estrogen, people always like think you're demonizing being a woman or whatever, and that's because there's been a long history of calling estrogen the female hormone. Um, and so if estrogen is the female hormone and you say something not celebrated about estrogen, then you are, you know, saying something bad about women or something. So I think there's this avoidance to say anything possibly negative um, to avoid that. Um, and on the, uh, you know, on, on that note, you know, there's all, there's almost like this fear of death. Um, and, and, and because death is scary. And so, and, and you don't want to say something bad about something that could be coming from inside the house, right? Like you don't say that um, radiation doesn't cause cancer because that's coming from outside the house. So that's not, you know, that's an outside force. So it's easier to digest almost, you know? Um, so, so, so I find estrogen so fascinating. I, it's, it's such an amazing hormone because nature presents itself with these dualities. And I've, ever since I was little, I've loved, loved dualities like uh, the sun and the moon, yin and yang. There's these like beautiful, every rose has its thorn situation that presents itself in nature with polarities. And so with estrogen, it is um, the hormone that allows, you know, very specifically allows us to grow children. Um, but uh, it, it, it's the kiss of life and the kiss of death. Um, and, and, and so like deeply understanding uh, its actions in the body allows us to understand what could be causing the cancer and lead to cure, you know, to curing it. Obviously they don't say cure cancer because, uh, that's like not allowed really in the medical profession. You can all not allowed to like cure anything. Uh, they say no evidence of disease. So, um, so, so when you think about estrogen in, in in reference to cancer there's two kind of departments um does it cause cancer and does it cause cancer to grow um and so one of the ways you know first talking about can it cause cancer when you think about a cancer cell um think about like it is a tiny building block that's you and if you're choking then something's wrong with how you're breathing and but so what about if a cancer cell is choking um, because a hallmark of cancer is the respiration is defective. So any factor that can cause respiration to be defective is considered a carcinogen. And estrogen can do that. It can disrupt a cell's respiration by stealing oxygen from the mitochondria. Um, and so, and, and you can go like dig deeper into how exactly it does that, but basically it interferes with oxygen utilization and oxygen is so important for a cell. So that's that one department of estrogen causing cancer and then on causing it to grow, um, basically, you know, estrogen's a growth hormone. It allows us to grow, uh, grow children, grow our bodies. Um, and then also, you know, that's lim not lim that cell proliferation is not always limited to the kiss of life, right? So, um, and, and that's, it, it's part of a healing mechanism, right? So if you have like a cut on your skin, what happens? Like your body sends signals to heal itself. And estrogen is is output a lot under stress tissue because of that purpose of regeneration. Um, but if the if the cell can't heal itself, then you're just stuck in that cycle of, of growth. And essentially cancer is like untethered growth. And so then you might be saying, oh my gosh, well, it's doing all these crazy things, these bad things to your body. And I, I don't like when people go there because it's like saying that I'm demonizing being a woman. Like, I'm a woman, I have estrogen, men have estrogen. Not a bad thing. Estrogen's messages are contained by progesterone. And then you see nature presenting itself with that yin and yang again. With, you know, estrogen and progesterone being beautiful antagonists to each other. Yin and yang. So progesterone keeps those messages contained. And um, that's very clear in the menstrual cycle after the surge, a wave of progesterone to hone that in, you know? So um, that's a little bit of how, I mean, and estrogen is not the only hormone that can disrupt the metabolism of a cell. 
um, their serotonin that I've, you know, written about before that can disrupt the metabolism. And, um, like, none of these things are, like, bad, right? Like, they're not bad. They are just processes that can happen in the body. And so that's almost, right, like, that's better than having an invading organism, right? Because you don't, there's, there's a lot of, you know, if you have a virus, that, which, like, viruses could possibly stress the tissue to cause cancer, but that's an invading organism is, is potentially more questionable than your own cell, your own body, because uh, it's not your own cell, it's not your own body. So I don't view any of these things as bad. I just try to understand them.